Hello dear guys. So in this video, I will show you one of my machine learning projects, which is predicting benign or malignant breast cancer. So benign means less chances of having cancer and malignant means more chances of having breast cancer. So we'll predict uh, from our given data set and we'll apply the machine learning algorithm and we'll see which machine learning algorithm to apply on our data set. So let's get started. So first of all, I am importing some of the uh, important modules such as NumPy and scikit-learn for machine learning, pandas for data analysis, matplotlib for data visualization and similarly pandas plotting for visualizing scatter matrix. So let's get started. So in the data which I got from Wisconsin breast cancer data from archive.ics.uci.edu, uh, their class was 2 and 4. So 2 was for benign class and less severe cancer and 4 was for malignant class which was more severe uh, chances of having cancer. So we'll uh, get the data and we'll load it from our PC. So first of all, I have uh, I am loading it from my PC, the data. I have downloaded the data and then I'll filter out some missing values and we'll see first 10 samples in our data. So as we can see that we have uh, the features, clump thickness, unit cell size, unit cell shape, mark addition, single epithelial cell size, bare nuclei, bland chromatin, normal nuclei, mitosis, class. So class is the target variable which we have to predict from our machine learning algorithms. And 2 is for benign means less severe chances of having cancer and 4 is for malignant means more chances of having cancer. So as we can see that these are the features. Some are 10, some are 7, 5, 4, 1. So we'll get the details of our data. So, so as we can see that minimum is 1 and maximum is 10. So for all the features except the class, we have minimum is 1 and maximum is 10. So we have a scale of 10 on which these features lie and the mean is 4, 3, 3, 2, 3. So as we can see that we can get some details like we have around 700 samples and we have a scale of 1 to 10. Let's get the info. So we have 699 samples each and integer values. Okay. Uh, let's visualize each of our feature on the histogram. Let's see how they are distributed. So as you can see that bland chromatin and clump thickness are only two features we, which are fairly distributed on the scale from 0 to 10 and all the other features are really less than so 2 or less than 2. Let's analyze more and let's uh, see that the class having 4, uh, what are their features? So we'll look on that. So we have taken first 10 samples of those people who are suffering from malignant cancer and uh, uh, figuring out their features. So first of all, we can see that all these features are on the higher scale. Mostly these features are on the higher scale on 10. So this might be the reason that if many of the features are on the higher side, uh, that can cause malignant cancer. So we have some insights on our data. And similarly, we, if we just see the data more clearly, 
you can see that we have around 241 samples of malignant cancer and we have mean of 7, 6, 6, 5, 5, 5, 5.9 means 6, 5.8. So we have uh, the higher side of these features if the person is suffering from malignant cancer. So let's correlate each feature and try to see if it helps. So as we have our features correlated, but not much conclusion can be driven out from here because uh, no pattern is visible clearly apart from this unit cell shape and unit cell size. We do not have any good pattern which we can analyze and apply in our algorithms and or we can choose which algorithm to apply. But one thing is clear from this graph, if we <coughs> try to reduce our features into a 2D plot, one thing is clear that the features which are on the higher side mm, are having the greater possibility of malignant cancer, but the features on the lower side are having more possibility of having benign cancer or the less severe cancer. So by visualizing this graph, we have two algorithms in our mind. One is K-neighbors and another is SVM or support vector machines. So we'll try to implement both of our algorithms and we'll see which has the higher accuracy and then we'll choose that algorithm for our machine learning. So let's get started and we'll apply the machine learning algorithm on our data set now. So let's apply the machine learning algorithm. First of all, we have to separate the features and the class. So the features are in the X and the class in the Y, the basic machine learning notations. And then we'll training our data, then we'll test our data. And I am applying the K neighbors classifier first, K neighbors algorithm first and then we'll get the accuracy. So let's get the accuracy. So we have the accuracy of around 99%, which is really good for our data. So this one is good. So now let's test the model on our new data points. So I have taken two samples. So one is having the higher side of the of our feature and one is having the lower parameters of our features so let's predict the data we can see that for the higher side it has predicted the malignant cancer and for the lower side it has predicted the benign cancer so that means our algorithm is working fine so let's apply another algorithm that is svm so we so we had two options either to use k neighbors or SVM. So we had used our K neighbors and it gave us the accuracy of around 99%. Let's see with SVM what is their accuracy. So I have implemented SVM. So it has having 97% lesser than the K neighbors algorithm which had 99%. So let's test our model on the similar data points. So it is also showing malignant S4 and benign S2. So both of them have predicted correctly. But if we are talking about the health sector, it is always advisable to use the algorithm with higher accuracy. So I think that uh, K neighbors can be the pretty good option to use on our data samples. So this was my project on benign and malignant cancer using machine learning algorithms. You can view the code on the given attachment. Thank you.